Hey, my name is Julia Cunningham. I'm here with Who Say, and as our ongoing uh, Power of Influence series, we're honored to have the amazing Kyler Lee join us. She portrays Alex from Supergirl on The CW on Monday evenings. Welcome. Thank you. You know, obviously, there was a huge turnaround reveal for your character this season that was slowly built up as her finally coming out. Mm -hmm. I want to know, when you started initially talking about this emergence of your your character, this devolving, what, what were you sort of unveiling slowly as the character? Sort of like how would you portray you knowing beforehand this sort of internal struggle that she obviously was carrying within her? Well, what was really interesting, I mean, as far as like un knowing the storyline and when, that, when they were gonna do that, I had no idea that Alex was gonna be lesbian. Like we had, that literally got that information like five weeks before we started oh, wow. uh, season two. So that was like, that was, an interesting introduction was like, by the way, she's gay. Um, and I'm like, okay, all right, cool, okay, yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's been a heck of a journey, but I think the, the biggest thing for me is it was so uncomfortable for me personally to play Alex in any kind of romantic situation. So being vulnerable like that, like you, you, we'd only seen a few examples of that, well, a lot of examples of that with Kara. Sure. Um, in season one. Yeah. And so there was that side to her that was sort of opposing the, the, you know, that badass kind of like always having stone face, like just taking names, you know what I mean? Right. Kind of thing. And then, so having it brought up in season two, it just wasn't even on my radar initially. And so actually then having to be in romantic situations, it was awkward and I felt awkward in it. So I think it translated pretty well, actually. Um, but luckily, I mean, with Floriana, she's just an amazing person, and so we really had to kind of navigate it together. Because for her character, I mean, she was already, even in the comic book, you know, she right. was already gay. She's she openly, was, that was known. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then for my character, it was just, I'm not in any of the comics. Right. So I'm an you original character. You can do character. whatever you want. We could do whatever we wanted, yeah. and we can, you know, really kind of push those limits. Um, but she's, she was a great person to be on the journey with because she's just as invested in, in telling a good story and that was the most important thing you know to me um, but really watching the development of, of Alex's season has been tremendously challenging in all the best ways. Oh I'm sure and I, I assume in some ways people watching and knowing that Kara's like character had drawn chemistry to you because mm -hmm. prior to your episode where your character comes out, mm -hmm. I saw through social media that people were already saying, I can see sparks between you two. Yeah. That something yeah. was happening. You know, and could you see the way that the fan base was shifting, that more people were starting to discover, maybe even just word of mouth, that there is an LGBT, you know, community getting involved into this TV series? Well, you know, I think it was. It threw a lot of people off, I think, just initially when they said, because Greg Berlanti came out last year saying that there was going to be a character in one of the shows that was going to be coming out, you know, um, as gay, didn't say one way, didn't say, because right. he didn't want to, that was the only or like terminology. Or, queer, right. Yeah, so it was just, there wasn't anything specific that was put out um, other than it could be on this show or it could be on that show. And people immediately was like, it's gonna be Alex. And like, and I was like, wow, why are you like, how do, how did you come up with that? And they're just like, well, we haven't seen her in any kind of situations. And then, you know, it kind of people figured it out pretty quickly. Um, but it was really like the first that very first scene with Floriana, you know, them the two of them, Alex and Maggie meeting, that it was like, okay, I right. can get it. And people then really jumped on board. Um, but I don't think it was really on anybody's radar initially. Yeah. Well, even I think there's something so interesting about the way to see like a real relationship unfold, especially mm -hmm. for someone new in a relationship, but also someone who holds resentments from their childhood, as she says, mm -hmm. she was, you know, heartbroken on Valentine's Day yeah. growing up, you know, and those sort of things. And, you know, just in the terms of social media, do you find that there's more stories that are outlets for people that you've sort of been pulled into and just hearing about people's stories and also realizing how do you now become that that influencer because now you are, whether you want to or not, pulled into that community. Yes, that's very, very well right? said. It's, In question yeah. form, yes. Yes. <laughs> but um, it, it's been overwhelmingly positive in so many ways. I mean, I, I've had many, th like thousands, and I mean genuinely like thousands of, of 
responses and people telling me their story and I mean like some really deep dark right. stuff and I'm I'm a, I'm a mom by nature I I'm just have a heart for people and, and have a heart for um, well really just humanity in general but once I'm hearing all this and I, and I knew initially like Greg Berlanti said to me he's like just understand this is going to be a really big deal. Gonna You're going to get a lot of notoriety, right. which for me is like, it's, it's not about that. For me, it's like, I do want to know that if I'm spending time away from my family and I'm going to be working on something, it's got to be 100% worth it. And like, for me to be able to step into this and tell a story that is having such a huge impact on millions of people, like that brings such a deep satisfaction, you know, and especially in an area that is so misrepresented and so undermined in so many different ways. And there aren't a lot of storylines of this depth, of this kind of magnitude right. on TV right now. And if they are, as the whole, is it the Klexa, is that what they called it? Yeah. The whole, yeah, the everybody's being killed off. Right. And so we were very much like, I'm not dying. I'm not <laughs> going anywhere. It's okay. Like, she's going to live. Lesbian lives. We'll just say that that's the new well, hashtag. Hashtag lesbian, lesbian lives. Yeah. Hashtag lesbian lives. So. And between your social media and your, you're just shy of a million between both combined. You're yes. getting close. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, do you find one is easier to respond to? Because obviously you have the limitations of Twitter. Instagram mm -hmm. you can go a little bit further because I'm sure you're getting obviously positive, but I was also scrolling through and seeing negative, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing on message boards and sure. seeing whatever else, like yeah. whether or not it's a, a quote unquote appropriate for mm -hmm. the CW, which is quote unquote family based, although it's yeah. television for everyone. Yeah. Do you find that it's, do you have a rule for yourself? Like how do you engage with people with this conversation? It's a delicate balance. It really is because I want to make sure that what I'm saying is encouraging. I want to make sure that I'm building people up, but I do get such raw, like open, honest comments that I'm kind of like, okay, I got to figure out how to navigate, you know, how I should address it, if it should be addressed right away, but I try to get to as many people as I possibly can because I want people to understand that you're heard and that you're important, you're valued. Um, that just means a lot. I'm, I'm a mom, so it's like I, I tell my kids that. Why wouldn't I say that to, you know, to anybody? It's like you're valued. And I think that's been the biggest response is just people saying, you see me, you right. hear me. And so I'm trying to engage, you know, as much as I can. I find that Twitter's been good because I can do quick responses, you know, mm -hmm. and I try to get everybody's name in there just so that they know I'm not just like, oh, scrolling. Yeah, scrolling I'm reading these stories and I'm crying and like, I'm, I'm just, they're so. Yeah, outpouring yeah. of emotion, sure. Instagram's been really great just because I can write a piece, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's just navigating, figuring out how to combine, like really put them together. I'm not as social media savvy as, as a lot of people are, but I'm trying, you know, and I try to tag everything together. And that Grey's I need Anatomy advice boot on camp that. didn't didn't get you into the I social media. I wasn't even I wasn't even on it at that point. I was, is that when you weren't live tweeting? No, oh, I just because I was like, I don't know that I'm really all that interesting. I for <laughs> me, I was just like, what am I going to tweet? Just say this is what I get at Starbucks, which in turn like is actually a really smart thing to do. That's, yeah, that's but what. I, but I didn't know that. I wasn't right. aware of that, you know. And then now. Knowing it's a whole new game when the CW is involved and yeah. like the whole Arrowverse in general. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. I, I really genuinely believe if you're put in a position of influence, it is a disservice not only to others, but a disservice to yourself to not use it in a way that's going to be positive and to build people up in, in a world that's so negative right now and in an industry that can be so negative. Right. If, if there's one thing that I can do is to encourage one person then, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, you and your husband have spoken about being very faith-based and mm -hmm. have your own charity and mm -hmm. you know do a lot of work for good. But I imagine there are a lot of people also from the Christian community, mm -hmm. although I know you're from a non-denominational church, yeah. mm -hmm. that they probably don't love that you're a representative of this. Have you had to deal with that? Yes, I have. And, and it's been an interesting journey because it made me question a lot of things myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, growing up, I didn't grow up in church, but I, it was kind of like this fast sort of growing thing for my husband and I. And I say this delicately, but there's a lot of things that I just don't agree with. And so explaining it to my, some of my friends and even family members and them saying, well, how can you, you know, and being genuine, not like right. being, you know, judgmental, but just like, how can you do that, you know, 
do a storyline like this, be portrayed like this, have a physical, intimate relationship with another woman. And it's like, because I'm a human being right. and I'm not perfect and I'm flawed and you're flawed. And how can I sit here, the things that I've done in my own past and in my own life that I might not, you know, I could be ashamed about or I could be, you know, I can't sit here and judge somebody. If you want to take it from a scriptural place, it's like you can't sit here and, and point out the flaws in somebody else without doing it to yourself. Sure. And it's so not a spiritual aspect. I don't think like this is just a matter of we're talking about humanity. We're talking about people discovering who they are and whatever that faith is for yourself. As long as, you know, you're staying true to who you are, I'm telling a story. It's what it is. I'm a storyteller. And I, I can't follow a lot of things that people say. It's interesting. I'm trying to find a good way to navigate this, this, this part. But when I found out about the storyline was very shortly after the Orlando shooting. And for me, I had such a hard time even thinking from a Christian standpoint, you could say, well, if someone's homosexual, then, you know, that's, it's evil. It's, you know, that's, that's a hell-based thing. And I'm just sitting here going, how could you possibly say that everybody that was involved and everybody that was in that club was going right. to go to, I, I just, yeah, I can't, can't understand. I yeah. can't understand that. Yeah. And so it's been an interesting thing. I have had family and friends say like, well, we're just not comfortable having our kids watch the show anymore. I'm like, that's, that's, that's I got to respect you, that then, that's right? you. Yeah. That's your parent. You do your own thing. I'm a person who believes that everybody should be loved equally. That's me. And if, you know, that's, that's what the God from the Bible should do. And that's what he does. And so I'm not here to point fingers or anything, but I have, it's been an interesting thing. It right. has. To and, talk about. But it's also a great yeah. conversation piece. And, Absolutely. and I think also the community, one thing that I just love about this show, and I think also Greg Berlanti has just done this well, all of his shows, you know, obviously Melissa uh, Benoist leads the show, but mm -hmm. it really feels like, especially with Supergirl, that it really is almost like an ensemble. Absolutely. You know, and that you guys mm -hmm. all lift each other. And I thought maybe you could speak to that, just like what that community brings and how supportive everybody is of each character on this show. That's, that's the thing, like, there aren't many times when you get a cast that genuinely everybody works well together. Um, not from a performance standpoint, I'm saying like real deal. Like, and, and the people that we have on set and in the show are just real, they're authentic, they're amazing, and we're all very much in support of each other. It's not about who has more screen time or who has more dialogue or anything. It's just, it's a camaraderie because we're passionate about what we're doing and what we're doing is making a difference a, a really big difference. We're not just talking about one thing. We're literally covering a plethora of social issues and things that are going on in the world that I think makes us very unique out of the comic book genre shows. We're one that's really covering a lot of bases passionately. Absolutely. And we know that there's going to be a lot coming up with your story as well. Mm -hmm. I, I hope there's going to be no breakups. Can you at least tease that there are no breakups for you? Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I we'll know take of. take that. Power of influence. Continue following. You. You're all over social media. You're live tweeting the show on Mondays. It's all Supergirl. It's all the time. Watch if you haven't been catching up on the CW app, on demand, whatever you need to do. This season has been phenomenal. So it's been, it's been. I think you guys really found your home switching over to the CW as yeah. well, being yeah, so yeah. supported with. I do too. It gave us a lot of people runway. that need to. Yeah, you're truly using your power of influence. I'm, I mean, I'm trying, that. but and we're, our organization is called Charity Pulse, and that's Charity what Pulse, yes. we're we're very much based on. It, is taking what you have, where you are right now, and turning it into something that is going to create a positive social impact and just make a difference. And that's what we're doing. That's, we're awesome. doing it. And I'm, I'm very proud. Yeah, charitypulse.com. Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. And Kyler Lee, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Mm -hmm.